Shout out our sponsors, GW Competitions. They run regular draws for you to win different prizes from cash to Rolexes to cars and all sorts. It's all legit and the draw is run through the Google number generator. And the prize is delivered the next day and if it's cash, it's transferred the same day. The draws are run on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And you've got to be in it to win it. Again, Big Ego Media. We've got another special guest today. Goes by the name of Shady. How are you, how are you sir? Ah, uh, I'm good, bro. I'm good. good. Yeah. I'm good. Good journey. Yeah. Not too bad. I'm in Woolwich. You know this place yeah. is different. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I mean, you have an interesting story. So <laughs> um, I don't know too much about it so far. I've heard a bit of glimpses from obviously. You hear the St. Giles, uh, Giles, is it still St. Giles' Trust? I want to say St. Giles' Project, but St. Giles' Trust. Yeah, St. Giles' yeah. Trust. Yeah. So um, it's an organisation I'm familiar with because when I spent time in prison, I actually worked with them in ones of prison at a time. So uh, before we get into your work with them, let's just talk about yourself and your history. So where are you from? Yeah, so uh, yeah, artist name still Shady, uh, Creighton Boy, you know. Mm -hmm. Credence hidden gem because there's a lot of things taking place underneath the roots. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, South of London, born and bred, music artist, uh, creative entrepreneur, uh, just an active force to just be like. So the yeah. artist name's still shady. If, if I'm trying to box the total definition of what I am, the story, everything behind yeah. it, is wherever there's shade, there's light. Yeah. You get me? I'm a person that's gone through very dark places, things that I've experienced, trauma, and um, once upon a time, that shaped my mindset. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, I saw that darkness and all of a sudden I changed my perspective to saying, wait, this darkness was a part of me for a reason. And it's not really darkness. I like shade better. Yeah. Cause you can't get shade without light shining mm -hmm. first. So now all of a sudden I walk in that confidence that even though I'm in dark places, even now I'm in dark places, but I'm supposed to be a light in that place. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I've just been shining through ever since, man. Yeah. So um, I mean, I mean, talking through it before we get to that sort of that whole transition. Yeah. That what's your early life like? Uh, where did you go to school? How was your upbringing? You... Yeah, hundred percent came from a two-parent household. Born in Brixton, my mother and father migrated from Nigeria, met one another, fell in love, had six kids, yeah. and straight away on the surface it looks amazing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I speak a lot about it publicly. I had a very violent relationship with my dad, yeah. both mentally and physically, yeah. and that created a lot of distance from the household where yeah. I made anything and everything as an excuse to be outside of that home. Yeah whether that was school, academics, and then eventually sport, and then eventually gang banging, yeah. you know? And um, yeah, man, through the work of St. Giles as well, and just a lot of stuff I do in schools, I'm really talking about that early exploitation that can take place. And yeah. bro, I was in a dark place, you get me? My music talks about it, I talk about it. And um, yeah, unfortunately by 17, you know, been stabbed five times, three different occasions, been shot at, jumped out of windows, Trap Den, Bando, County Lines, you name it. I've seen it, I've experienced it either from myself or from just seeing it growing up because of my older brothers and yeah. who they were in the area as yeah. well. So what was you in terms of sibling? What number was you? <laughs> I was number four. Number so four. me and my big sister are middle kids. So okay. um, yeah, by the time I went into year seven, my older brothers were like in year 11, first yeah. year first uh, sixth form yeah. and I remember I got kicked out of my first um, secondary school then I got managed moves after being in centre for a bit yeah. and I remember when I went into that second school which was the school my older brothers went to yeah. that's when it really started that's yeah. when I started to see the accolades of being someone someone's brother that was yeah. respected in the area and, I mean yeah, I talk man. a lot about my brother's influences so yeah was that this kind of similar to you because your brothers had a name that sort of protected you, but also did you seek that sort of um, acceptance from them or did they sort of say, what are you doing, man? Don't get involved. Yeah, you just hit it straight away. Absolutely. Like, it even went, I'll go even further to say, at first I was doing it to impress them. Yeah. I wanted to be around them. Mm. Um, and um, they always, I remember the first time I got into a madness, 16, like a big madness, and I remember... 
um, when I was just, I can't get into it, but all of the retaliations and stuff. I remember my brother came to me that day and he, he just saw how I handled it. Yeah. I remember him just being like, bro, I respect you. Mm. Like, you did that all by yourself. You didn't get me involved as your big brother. And that just affirmed me. Yeah. But um, the spin-off on that was eventually they grew out of it. Yeah. You know, by the time they were in 18, 19, they, start, they started to see life. Yeah. They went uni and then they left Mm. Um, the ends, you know, they're still not in the ends now. Okay. And I remember that was kind of a, a, a burden I took on because I started, to, they left me with their friends, mm. you know what I mean? And then I remember starting resenting them, car. you get me, my older brothers in the gang, I had to copy what I saw. So they're making money, I had to copy what I saw. Like mm. I just literally would follow their example. Mm. And then it was like, when by the time I was getting nicked all the time, they couldn't chat to me no more. Yeah. Then, yeah, man, but we're good now. Though. I mean, you, you talk about your, your, your parents and one of the things we all talk about, and I guess in a lot of African homes, it is mostly both parents are there. Yeah. yeah we see it in a lot of African homes. So in terms of your, the influence of your father, what was lacking that you, you couldn't sort of put you in the right track? As I said, it was violent, bro. Yeah. Like, um, what caused the um, violence? Was you, was you trouble misunderstanding. Yeah. Like, I feel like mm, that's a big question. You get me, car? I'm speaking a lot of post reflection now. Yeah. So I can talk about what I was doing wrong, but I'm I'm young. I'm yeah. I'm a sponge. You get mm. me? Like those early, like I the one of the first lessons I saw from my dad was uh, authority. He yeah. taught me what authority was. Yeah. yeah? His hat, his 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 boldness. Him as a man in my household, his strength. He was he was strong. He was a leader. Mm -hmm. All of these things. So even now, I can take some of them in a positive way. But these, he taught me what authority is. That's yeah. the lesson of today. But I didn't love that authority because he didn't teach me love. Yeah. So the first lesson I left was I don't love authority. Yeah. So now male teachers, police, elders. Anyone that tries to be on authority, I'm switching off. You can't mm. talk to me. You're not my dad. Yeah. And um, if he taught me how to honour that authority mm. or maybe even trust that authority, you know, if I felt that love and embrace from that authority, when you do make mistakes and I don't just get the hard hand, maybe the trajectory in my life would have been different. So now, you get me, I've done, bro, I've gone through, I'm entrenched in counselling, bro. Like, I've seen, I've gone through spaces and even the work of St. Giles gives you a space and therapy to talk about some mm. of your realities, yeah, in a positive light. But before I got to that stage, I'm still walking through this mindset of, cool, I'm a leader now. I'm a man of my own household. I have to do this for my family. And I'm seeing the residues of error because I'm an authority now, but I need to also be a servant as well. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that makes so, sense. So, yeah, so how was your relationship with your mum at this time then? Yeah, um, love my mum, still mm -hmm. do. Like, yeah, it was good, but my mum didn't really um, have um, a, a stake mm. to really, like, set her own agendas yeah. in the house because of, you know, of my dad. Um, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, but, she, and, like, rightly so, or understandably so, like, she just, the proximity of it, she didn't really understand. And remember, yeah. they're, they're migrants from Nigeria. Yeah. I think the house, the things that we go through in this household, if you have first generational parents from another country, you're already going to have a communication yeah. gap. And they just didn't understand, bro. It's like kind of two different worlds because they've come from Africa, come over here, trying to just maintain and yeah. get where you're used to life. But where yeah. you're actually seeing it for what it is from a young yeah. age with the, the young people growing up there. So yeah. I think parents don't actually Facts. acknowledge or see that. But for them, you can you understand it from their point of view, like, wait, we brought you here for a better life and so on. Yeah, and, and that creates that big pride. Yeah. You get me? Like, raw, but we did all of this for you. Mm. But you can't tell that to a 10-year-old. Yeah. I can hear it now and respect it. Mm. But back then, I'm just like, what do you mean? This is all I, I didn't, I didn't ask you to bring me here. And that's almost an ex expectancy where it's like, you need to perform well. Yeah. And the standard of that well is peak. Mm. Because when you see where they came from, it was peak where they came from. So they expect highly of you. Mm. Um, but <laughs> man never met the mark. <laughs> so, I mean, how, how was you academically at school? I was strong, bro. Yeah. That, was my, that was my escape early on. You know, before I got into the gang thing, I used to just home in um, into whatever was in front of me. That's what I kind of have. I'm focused. Anything I put my mind to, I'm focused. So when I didn't want to be focusing on the madness and home and 
this like I just focused on what was in front of me and yeah man was like academic still like mm. um that was like my secret weapon as well for like okay. like even though I was in school and I'm misbehaving like oh well, he's he's great or decent like let's mm. keep him inside here you know what I mean that's okay. I could smell that oh yeah this is my lifeline mm. so I used that yeah got kicked out of college I did my uh A levels from home okay so man's a learner you I taught myself how to play piano you get me? I'm really pride myself in you can help help yourself, yeah. especially when other things around you aren't helping you. Like you gotta help yourself, and that's all I knew back then. Like I need to be able to study to at least keep some people off my back, the professionals, the safeguarding people that were in my situation. Oh no, but you studying though. That was always my excuse. So I mean, like you said that you started gang banging. Uh, at what age did that happen? And what was the the transition that put you into that whole thing is it was it like Brixton stuff that was going on at the time? Uh, no, so I was only I'm I'm a Craden boy like yeah. albums Craden baby I'm a Craden boy but I went I was in Brixton still since age three my house okay. got burnt down then we moved to a Craden mm. and it was when we were in Craden that yeah that my life started I don't even really remember summer late in Brixton yeah. sides yeah but um but yeah Craden I would say it started the gang banging started when I moved to this school and okay. I met my older brother's friends. Okay. They got me, like, to be around them, They you just had to do things. Mm. You know, you had to do hold things, you had to follow this principle. You know what I mean? So they were my, they became my excuse for being outside at home. You know, mm. Saturdays, my was even, I used to go library on Saturday. Mm. I used to tell my mom I'm going to library to start and I would. Then I would just start leaving the library and just started to, like, my was, bro, a Christian household. Mm. My was in a, my yard, apart from the violence, that made me angry. It taught me anger, but I wasn't a bad, it wasn't like a negative, yeah. like the cliches. Man came from a good household on the surface. Mm. I emphasize on the surface. But yeah, but then I started to be around things that were occupying my time and my focus. You know what I mean? And it was so genuine. I remember, I used to have this rationale, uh, Bobby, like, I would like, I would, I would think, you know, when a man's tapped and like they don't really know what they're doing. Mm. Like man was, I was tapped in. I knew what I was doing. So when I was holding things, I knew what I was doing. And mm. like, so yeah, that started around 15, 14, 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when it got to a point, you said you've been stabbed five times on three different occasions. Yeah. I mean, people get stabbed once and it's like enough. What was the thing about it keep happening to you? Um... Why did it keep happening mm. to me? Um, I figure, like, it's mad because all three different occasions are different case studies. Okay. You know what I mean? First time I got stabbed was uh, 16 and it was by my brethren. Yeah? Wow. So my friend was chilling in the block, crading. He was waving around a knife. He thought that holding the knife was cool. There was girls in the block. Mm. I remember teasing him, laughing at him. Like, you're not using that. You're not chefing no one, bro. Like, yeah. he got angry. He said, shady, I'm going to use it on you. Mm. Like, go on then. He stabbed me, went a bit too deep. But then it, that was the first time I went stabbed. I fell on the floor. I remember banging out. Police came and I had to calm down. Mm. I used that as a case study because my brother stabbed me. I forgave him afterwards. Yeah. But I subconsciously started thinking, raw, man got stabbed. Cool. Like, mm. I got one on my arm. Cool. Second occasion, that was the really serious one. 19, I was in Bromley. Situation happened. Um, I was with my baller friends as well came from paintballing, got into a little passer, got stabbed three times. Mm. Once in my other arm, twice in my back. Mm. One of them was a few inches from my lung, from mm. behind. I remember when the doctor was telling me this on the, in the ward and I was angry. Mm -hmm. Then I remember that one actually started the whole um, retaliation mindset. Okay. I'm going to get these youths back, back and forth and it happened and all of these things happened. And that was the one when I said, I'm never going to roll with a knife. That's when I'm never going to roll without my knife again. Mm. And I think when you start rolling with a knife, you start attracting more violence. That energy, yeah. Like after I said, yeah, I'm rolling with a knife, like the amount of passes. Mm. Like, man used to do this stuff like, oh, let's sword fight. Like yeah. outside parties. Like, you, got, you would be so happy. Like someone pulls out their knife and it's like, thank God I got mine. And it's mm. like, and it's like, but you don't clock and think, bro, but man, why is man's why is man's bomber jacket got holes mm. in it and all of that because you went into that place mm. so yeah and then the last time funny enough was where we're from now where we are at now okay uh, yeah yeah i got dip round hair um that was a party i was more older then okay i was like in my t i was 20 and um i wasn't even really on violence now now it's all about money yeah and power 
but so when I was at that party and like living life and then I got into an incident afterwards, I was on my way out of mm. just like being on this violent thing, but that was just a more emphasis of like, cause I didn't even know the youths. Mm. So I was just like, yeah, that was my last time, but I can talk about each of them in depth, but yeah, yeah three, three different occasions for real. And as that sort of, when you see sort of the knife crime that goes on then now, and, I feel blessed, and bro. Well. So that's what yeah. I get to is like, and they see how many people, I mean, we're about to break the record, God forbid, but they're saying we're looking to break the record uh, yeah. for the murders this year. Yeah. And at a time that where we're still in the pandemic, like when you look at that, what are your thoughts on that? It's break, heartbreaking, you know? Mm. Like, bro, like, have you ever like, have you ever thought of something from the past and like you just shiver like, mm. bro, how did I get out of that? Like, oh, I can't believe I was there. Or, like you think it's like embarrassing that mm. like, you said, like, and you just think, oh, why did I say that? Like, that's like me when, I think of some of these incidences, I'm like, rah, like I was on the floor fighting with it, you, two, two, someone else is blading me from the back. Mm. I'm like, I'm dumb. If I knew that post reflection, I would have got up, mm. ran. Mm -hmm. So especially now that I see the amount of like terrors that we're seeing daily, like I'm coming from a meeting this morning talking about a young boy that just got stabbed 15, 16 in Shrublands. Mm. You know, I used to walk around Shrublands with my boys, get me South London, that's happening every other day. And it's like, yeah, I'm just sensitive again. For a while, man was numb, but yeah. you get me. I take a moment to even look at some of these lies. Car, man, just doesn't want to be sense desens. I don't want to be desensitized yeah. to some of it, man. I mean, you're here today with St. Charles, so uh, I mean, tell us a bit about the organization and the work that you've been doing with them. Yeah, so I think in 2016, in a nutshell, two of my I lost two of my brethren. One of them went to prison for a long time, yeah. and the other one was murdered. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I remember being a man that was making a lot of money. Like I was trapping, um, I was made, I still I was still a musician, talking about like my negative lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I was just glorifying it. I thought my life was good in 2016, bro. Yeah. Like I was making money, lifestyle, yeah. But after I lost two of my closest friends, this mad question just started hitting me, like, what is man's life? What is man really doing? And I couldn't answer it, and it was scary, bro. Like, I'm a calculated thinker. Mm -hmm. I know what I want to do in life. But I couldn't answer that question and I was depressed, bro. Smoking weed, hard drinking, I was confused. Like all I knew was I need to change my life. Yeah. Yeah. So um and I changed it December 2016, on the 4th of December. And then as I changed it, that just changed like my perspective. I like I get I like I found my faith, yeah, as a Christian. And I just started just publicly talking about my truth. Yeah. So throughout 2017 onwards. I was just being invited to just, cause I was speaking about my music, my raps, did a documentary with BBC, invited to speak in parliament. I was just doing bits. And I, all I was doing was just talking my talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't lying like these rappers. Mm. I was just talking it publicly. I remember my manager was like, bro, you're talking too much. I was like, what are you talking <laughs> about? I'm just like, I'm just being me. Yeah. I'm just sharing my truth. I didn't lie when I was on road. I'm not gonna lie when I've changed. So I've been doing that, going into prison, schools, throughout the course of these years. And then of recent, I collaborated with St. Giles. I saw my work and I've seen the amazing things they're doing. And they just literally took that to another level yeah. because they have such a, they have such an engine. They have such an engine where mm. they're supporting um, individuals across the country. Mm. So um, yeah, and the work that I do specifically with them is around this service called SOS Plus, yeah. where they basically go into school, academic fields, institutions, and they're just, bringing people like me with a past, with yeah. lived experience to shine light on young people that don't need to go through those same yeah. mistakes. So it's awareness building. And obviously we do a lot of work with like parents and like um, professionals as well. But yeah, that's a lot of the work that I do with St. Giles and it's incredible, bro, I can't lie. Just seeing individuals like man, that look like man, mm. that I've seen the, 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 the consequences of their mistakes and they've come out, out of that and now they can touch on some of their traumas, but in a positive light, it's it's incredible, yeah. So I've got around the country mm. right now, just talking at schools and everything, so yeah. I mean, when you go to these schools, do, do, what do, do you think these kids are listening? Because I don't know, I go and do the same sort of things, I go yeah, into schools, it. and my whole thing is that, you know what? There must be some kids thinking, no, I'll just shut up and hurry up, I'm not going to this. <laughs> but there might be that one kid, yeah. he says, you know what? I'm gonna listen to that, that's, yeah. gonna, that's gonna make me change my mind. So yeah. do you get that, you feel that impact? Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel it every time I go still. I mm. can't lie, the lived experience model is incredible. Mm. Like, we, like, because when we go, and I say it, bro, I'm not a teacher, like, you get me? You know, mm. I'm a rapper, 
I come here, I'm just about to tell you my story. Yeah. You want to do bando? I'm going to tell you what your employer's never going to tell you. Mm. I'm going to tell you how it actually looks. I'm going to yeah. tell you how much you're paid and what you're going to see in that place, yeah? And I, from that, they're gripping. They're mm. gripped. Whether you're in it or not, you know, I've seen young boys that are entrenched, you get me? But they can hear my story and I'm, you get me, man, still young. I'm sharing it from a place like, bro, that I lost myself there. Mm. The money wasn't enough. I told them the money man makes wasn't enough. And then, of course, then there's also the the youths that they've never been involved. Yeah. They just need to know because you're the, Prevent, they, you're, yeah. you're the ones they want. They mm. want the youths that are not involved. They want to groom you because you don't know about it. You're ignorant. You live up in Norwich or you live up in Ipswich or wherever you are. And they want you because you're local to mm. Bando. You're local to the spot. And they're going to groom you. So that's a lot of the work as well. The intervention on both sides. The spectrum is mad. Mm. But yeah, they all need to know it, man. I mean, let's uh, touch also on, on your music. So yeah. uh, how long you been rapping, you were saying? 10 years deep, but like fruit still shady. The real brand started in 2016. Right. Yeah. And um, you said that you used to sort of rap about a certain lifestyle before. Yeah. Yeah. So how hard have you found the transition? Because we all know kind of sometimes controversy sales, yeah. sex sales, yeah. drug sales. So how do you sort of try to change your lane yeah. and try to make yourself relevant? Yeah, my fans will show you, bro. Yeah. I'm hard, man. I just need to be myself unapologetically. Yeah. Like, I feel I never came into the business to lie. You know, I'm a bit of an old cat on that end because yeah. you now you got to make up things. I was just being honest, yeah. you know what I mean? I listened to Nas, I listened to Jay-Z. That man just sold their truth and they made it attractive. So I just told my truth. I mean, when I started going through certain changes, there's a way you got to say it. Mm -hmm. But and, I, and I'm just an entertainer. It's not every track that a man's about to just start spitting conscious stuff yeah. at you. But within that, when you see me, you come on these interviews now. You know, I just dropped a single Afrobeat. It's just enjoyment, yeah. ginger for the summer. But when they see this, it's reminding them that, bro, this is what it's really in. Mm. At least when you talk, bro. I don't, you know, it's jarring, bro. Every time we see these American interviews, when we see one of our, our rappers go out there and they're just talking was, yeah. they're just... They don't even know how to put sentences together. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm, then that builds narrative like, oh, the UK would just, mm. them man. Nah, bro. When they see stuff like this and they see what man's really on and what we're doing is genuine. And I feel like I want to change that narrative. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard, but yeah, man. So we're living it. What's next for sort of still shady. St. Giles first and then so, so still shady too? St. Giles, obviously we're currently doing the summer campaign. Yeah. So right now we're just, yeah, doing a lot of uh, work, building the awareness, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, St. Giles got a national reach, you know, it's an incredible charity, but we need to have more. Mm. You know, people need to know about the work we're doing, man, because it's incredible. So um, yeah, we just continue to work, you know, just actively shining light, helping young people. And of course, St. Giles as a whole charity does a lot of work around, mm. you know, those marginalised and at risk. So yeah, St. Giles work just continues 60 years deep mm. as well. That's amazing. Yeah, That's amazing. 60 years, 60 years yeah. Yeah, so that work continues there. And then um, for myself, still shady, just keep, um, just keep pushing, man. I'm an independent artist to the core, you know, shout out my incredible team. And um, yeah, man, we got the project dropping this this uh, this year. Okay, okay. So um, yeah, man, is that, we're just is that busy, EP? Uh, yeah, EP, yep. EP. So um, yeah, 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 just consistency there. Obviously, I just dropped my singles, I dropped. But yeah, man, the work continues, man. Yeah, work man. continues. Like I said, I Daddy, didn't know come too much. Me with. I, yeah, no so more, yeah. no more. <laughs> I didn't know too much, but you're you very informative. Got to know you, got to know your character, and I'll be definitely following your your journey and Love see how bro. things go. And Shout out to you and St. Giles for the incredible work you guys are doing, man. Love, bro. You should become a man. Man,